Hi, this is Walcott Fine Art and I'm Jason Walcott. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at red. I'll show you a number of different reds that you can buy in oil paint and explain the differences between each one and maybe help you decide which ones you want to try. So let's go take a look at red. So hey, welcome back everyone. And today, as I said in the introduction, we are going to be taking a look at uh, different reds in oil paint. And I'll go over uh, some of the most common, uh, some of the ones that I use here. And then I will try to help you decide uh, maybe which one you want to try, which one you want to use. Uh, so let's get started. So uh, the first red I'm going to look at today which is one that I use a lot on my palette, and I just love it, is Cadmium Red Light. And uh, the Cadmium Reds uh, came along in the uh, 19th century, um, uh, the early to mid 19th century they were invented, and they were used a lot by the Impressionists. And they, the Cadmium colors, uh, especially the reds, um, well, all the Cadmium colors are fall into a category of pigment known as uh, uh, inorganic mineral pigments or mineral pigments so they um, have the quality that they're very very bright in mass tone uh, but when you mix them with white they kind of turn a little bit dull uh, so that's one of the unique properties uh, about them but uh, the more the darker it gets the more accentuated that property is so cadmium red light um, doesn't do that too much, uh, really, if at all. Uh, so it's a nice... Now, cadmium red light is an, is an orangey, warm red. Uh, so it's great for mixing oranges. It's great for painting autumn scenes, for uh, warming up shadows, for uh, anything where you need a warm red color. Um, it is... Now, the cadmiums are opaque, uh, so they, they will definitely have covering power. So this is the uh, color straight from the tube is this beautiful, gorgeous, like orange, orangey red. Um, it's definitely red, but it, it you can see that it leans toward the warm orangey side. Uh, so it's not going to make really great uh, violets, uh, but it's great for mixing uh, warm colors. So, uh, so let's mix that with a little bit of white. You can see what it looks like. Uh, it's a very strong color. So when you mix it with white, it makes these really nice, warm, peachy, salmon sort of pinks. Uh, that's great. Uh, you mix that with yellow ochre. Uh, that makes great um, Caucasian skin tones. Uh, you can mix it with uh, burnt sienna or burnt umber for a darker skin tone. So it's a great color for... Um, you know different tones of skin uh, if, you, if you're a portrait painter uh, cadmium red light is a really great color for that um, so that's one of my favorites and I use that on my palette as a standard color now the next one is cadmium red medium uh, which again is a warm red that leans toward orange uh, you would not want to use this to try to mix a saturated purple but if you want to mix a dull purple uh, for landscapes or shadows, uh, that would be a great uh, color to go with. Again, you can use this for uh, portraiture. Uh, now, uh, as I mentioned before, that quality that some of the cadmium reds have to get dull when you mix them with white. Um, as I said, the, the deeper the red color you go, the more accentuated that is. So the cadmium red light barely does that at all. The cadmium red medium does it somewhat, and then cadmium red deep will turn a very definite dull, dull pink when you mix it with white. I don't use that, um, and typically I stay away from the cadmium red medium, but in this particular case, I want to recommend specifically the Utrecht brand for cadmium red medium, because I don't know where they get their pigment sourced from, but it's the only one that I found in the cadmium red medium that doesn't do that. Uh, it's this beautiful red 
straight from the tube. And when you mix it with white, it does not get that dull quality to it. It stays like a richer pink color that doesn't have any gray in it. So I think that's probably coming across pretty well on, on the camera. So you can see it makes a pink that's uh, darker and more red than the cadmium red light, uh, but it's not really, this Utrecht specifically um, is not dulling down much. So that's a really beautiful uh, warm red color to use, this cadmium red medium Utrecht. So, okay, so now we're moving on to the next one, which is pyrrole red. Uh, this is a great color. Um, Windsor Newton, in their line of paints, it's called bright red, uh, but the standard pigment name is pyrrole red, and the pigment index number, I believe, is pigment 254. So just look on the tube and for pigment 254, regardless of what the name is called here, and it will be pyrrole red. Now, pyrrole red is a really good, it's a more modern pigment, So, and it's a really good, you can see it's a really beautiful, like, true fire engine American flag red. That's very neutral uh, in tone. It doesn't really uh, noticeably lean toward orange or violet. And when you mix it with white, it, 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 it maintains its intensity when you mix it with white. Um, it makes nice pinks, but they're not the, like sort of obnoxious Pepto-Bismol pink. <laughs> it stays like a neutral, right in the middle color. Um, and so this is great for, um, for painting red objects. It's great for painting florals. Uh, this would be a good color if you wanna paint the uh, warm lit light areas on red roses. Uh, so that's pyrrole red. And the next one here, now we're moving into the cool reds. Uh, now the most common one that you'll find is permanent rose. This is sometimes called uh, quinacridone rose. The quinacridone colors uh, came along in the 50s, I believe. Uh, and they're one of the first permanent pigments to be in the red violet or the cool red line. Most, mostly, you know, through all through history, cool reds tended to be very impermanent and they would fade very quickly. But the Kernacridones are permanent. Um, and like I said, this uh, Kernacridone rose is, is uh, uh, often known more uh, commonly as permanent rose, which is this color here that you see. Uh, now this is a cool red, but it's a little bit, it's still a little bit slightly to the warm side. So um, it will, this will make beautiful violets if you mix it with with um, a blue, like say ultramarine. Uh, uh, now it's, the quinacridone colors are very transparent. So this would be a great uh, color for glazing as well as mixing, so you mix a little white in with it. Now you can see that's a much more sort of pinky rose color than the warm reds over here and the neutral red for pyrrole. I'm running out of room here. So, so anyway, so you can see that makes a nice uh, sort of pink color. So this would be good for cool, uh, cool red tones on um, flowers, portraits, um, anything like that. Uh, permanent rose is a great color, like I said, for mixing nice violets, uh, for shadows, for landscapes. And then uh, it's also a great, uh, as I started to say earlier, a great, great glazing color because of its inherent transparency. We'll show you that. Mix it with some medium here. Glaze it on a white. So you can see when you make a glaze from it, it's this really intense 
beautiful, saturated, you know, rose pink color. Um, and so that's that's great for glazing. Corn the cornacarone colors are great for glazing because of their their transparency that they have. We'll set that aside for a second. So next we'll move on to this color here, which is, now this is the one that I use on my palette most often for cool red, and that's Quinacridone Magenta. And the difference between Quinacridone Magenta and Quinacridone Rose is the magenta, uh, this, the pigment index number on this one is uh, pigment red 122. It's also used as the process magenta in uh, printing, like the CMYK printing. Uh, and the difference between this and the permanent rose is this is a little bit of a cooler red. Uh, in mass tone, it looks very similar, but when you mix it out with white, it's just slightly more cool and a little more violety than the permanent rose. So I find it widens my color ranges a little bit in terms of the different colors that I can make from it. So you see when I mix it with white that it's cooler than the permanent rose. And then when you mix it, it makes this nice, really bright sort of pink, pink color. It's really nice. Uh, again, that would be great for roses, for florals. Um, but it widens up the color range, I find for me a little bit, because uh, it is a cooler. Um, you know, you can go more into the violet range, but you mix that with yellows, you can still get some pretty good oranges and some pretty good uh, warmer reds if you want, if you need that. Uh, or kind of neutral oranges for painting fall landscapes, things like that. So I find the Quinacridone Magenta to be really, really useful. And again, that's just like the rose. It's a great glazing color. So if you take a little bit um, medium and mix it in with all of the again all of the quinacridone colors are inherently transparent so they make excellent glazing colors so, so again you can see there and the difference between the Quinacridone Magenta and the Quinacridone Rose. You can see the Magenta is a little more saturated. It's a little more intense uh, and it leans a little bit more toward Violet, which I feel makes it a little more useful. So, and then last but not least, I want to talk about Alizarin Crimson. Now, this color that I have here laid out on the palette uh, is actually not Alizarin Crimson, this is a substitute. And the reason that I want to talk about Alizarin Crimson is Alizarin Crimson has been a staple on the artist's palette for many, 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 many years since the early 19th century. Uh, it's a standard color that every artist seems to use, but it has been proven almost beyond the shadow of a doubt that Alizarin Crimson is very impermanent. It will fade very quickly. It's not a permanent color. It's not acceptable for artists' use, and yet artists tend to keep using it because it's just it's what they've done. And you know, but there's there's so much overwhelming evidence that alizarin crimson, um, you know, is what they call fugitive. It's a fugitive color that will fade very quickly uh, in a lot of cases, especially in watercolor. Uh, it's much worse in watercolor, but um, you know, because watercolors are so transparent, but with oil paints, it will still do, still do it if you mix it with a lot of white and you make tints. Uh, if you use genuine alizarin crimson, it's it's going to eventually fade on you. Um, so the color that I want to recommend as a substitute is this color I have laid out here. Now this is uh, a color that's made by Rembrandt. Uh, it may be made in other manufacturers, but I buy the Rembrandt. Uh, and it's Rembrandt's, it's called Permanent Matter Deep. And the pigment index number on it is Pigment Red 264. Now, this is almost a perfect substitute 
for Alizarin Crimson. I compared it um, myself to some Alizarin Crimson, some genuine Alizarin Crimson, which unfortunately I no longer have. Um, but it was so close that I could not tell the difference. So if you mix it with white, you can see it has the same, if you're familiar with Alizarin Crimson, it has that same sort of dullness and yet it's like dull and rich at the same time it's it's kind of hard to explain unless you can see that alizarin crimson has and it really makes a near perfect substitute none of the um other like permanent alizarin crimsons i found that are made for mixed colors um ever quite come as close to this and this is a single pigment color which is really good uh, you always want to try to use single pigment colors if you can because those will give you the cleanest color mixes and again if we go in here and glaze a little bit of this uh, it, it has the same glazing properties essentially as alizarin crimson it's transparent and has the same beautiful red tones to it that alizarin crimson has when you glaze with it so so if you're a user of alizarin crimson or you want to use a color that's you know like that as your cool red then i strongly recommend you avoid using the genuine alizarin crimson and use this permanent matter deep instead by rembrandt this is a really really nice color so anyway so those are your most common and most uh, versatile and useful reds that you'll find i think there's lots more of them but um a lot of them are just they kind of repeat what these do uh so if you have these or you want to try some of these i encourage you to experiment for yourself and see what you like and i hope that this video helped you make some informed decisions so i thank you for watching and i'll see you next time take care Thanks so much for watching. Go ahead and click on that subscribe button so you won't miss the next video. And why not spread the joy? Be sure to share my videos on your favorite social media. Don't forget to head on over to my website, walcottfineart.com, where you can see my art, read my blog, or when you join my newsletter list, you can win free art. Every month, I'll choose a lucky winner for my email list, and that person will receive a mini original oil painting. There's a chance to win every month, so be sure to sign up today so you don't miss out. Plus, you'll get my fun newsletter. See you next time!